Sweat Equity Podcast and Streaming Show. We got our guest Beth Miller slapping some PR your way, slapping a little dating app action. Yeah, I like that. Because that is your own brand, and if you don't work on your own brand in the dating world, you lose We're the number one comedy business, comedy business podcast in the world. Pragmatic entrepreneurial vice with real what? raw no talk. No, <laughs> we're not. I mean, last night. <laughs> that dissenting voice. No, and. Eric Redinger. <laughs> 2020's best small medium enterprise business advisory podcast in the United States. That's a real award from Lux Global Excellence Awards, proudly hosted by Lux Life Magazine. Yeah, 2020. We won it. We're going for it again. 2021. Listen to us on Apple, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, iTunes. iHeartRadio now. iHeartRadio, Google Play, uh, Google Podcasts. Amazon podcast and a litany of other places you listen to podcasts. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Try expressvpn.com forward slash sweat. It's a three months free. What's a VPN? You've probably heard about this. It's a virtual private network. You want to see shows in other countries? Well, use a virtual private network like try expressvpn.com forward slash sweat. Don't want to be tracked by big data? Try expressvpn.com forward slash sweat. Use a Tor browser too. You won't be tracked by big data. I sure hope not. Sure hope not. Get three months free when you go to our link. That's try expressvpn.com forward, forward slash sweat. Yeah. Like key sweat. Wow. I am rusty. Not like rusty, like key sweat. TrackSpressVPN.com forward slash sweat. Light key sweat. Montage sweat. Three months free. Let's get this party started. Howdy it Sweat equity. Sweat equity. Sweat 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 equity. My sweat equity. My, my sweat equity. Uh, Beth, hit him up with your uh, plugs before our ADHD kicks in. Do you have anything? Like, how does someone get a hold of you if they need your PR advice or consulting? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't practice what I preach. I'm working on my website right now. Oh, yeah? Squarespace site? Any day now, BethAMiller.com. Okay. Well, they can reach us, and we'll we'll be the broker. <laughs> if uh, Otherwise... If- Beth Miller PR at Gmail. It's tough doing your own promo. Yeah. Although if you're in PR, <laughs> might I, wanna... I preface by saying I don't practice what I preach. But we it's do the coming. same thing. We do the same thing. We yeah, we're look, we're just talking shit because we hate ourselves in this direction. Very true. Yeah. Uh you can hear us all right on that. I can. Do I look like I'm ready for my self tape audition? Yeah. What you, yeah, what where you, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's my workout room, but my office is terrible lighting, so I just come in here. The lighting's very good. I I, I didn't think you're quite the uh, quite the summer. I thought you're more of an autumn. But yeah, it's really it's really bringing out your cheekbones. Yeah, I can get gay with it. I don't care. But I didn't don't say that was gay. Boring, I, I didn't just because just... I'm wearing a scarf. Don't don't get mad at me. I said I like the scarf. First of all, I said you could pull it off. You could pull it off. Oh, and he's got red pants on too. Mm-hmm. Again, power. Those Is are my the cravat. The what? A cravat. What's that? Is that a, a yeah. Scott? I was going for an ascot. Kind of. Is that you know like, a, like fancy like sailors or like polo country club guys? They have the. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to be. I want to be 80s D-bag <laughs> villain guy in a movie. Oh, yeah. You know, have a have like a, like more a, of a bully, yeah. skinny tennis racket. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What? So, all right. So we haven't asked you this the last time you were on. And uh, so I'm going to ask you at the beginning instead of the end. What advice would you give your 13-year-old self? You t- you can get in a time you didn't know I was going to ask you this because you don't listen to the show. <laughs> uh, so you don't, go don't I'll, go in don't go into public relations. Oh, so wh- why why is that? My stuff. No, I I would I would say this. It's it's not don't go into public relations. That's 
that's my joke, but it's ha, ha, ha. spend more time, <laughs> spend time researching, following, learning a lot about the profession you want to go into and don't kind of wing it like I did because <laughs> maybe it is what you want to do. Maybe it's not what you want to do, but I, I basically said, mom and dad, I'm going to Florida state. And then I felt really bad doing out of state tuition for a free college football school. So I was like, all right, I got to get a legit degree business school. And then I quickly realized the only cool thing in the business school to do for me was marketing. So that's how I ended up in it. So well, marketing is cool. And, and I've talked to you. <laughs> it is cool guys. Okay. I like it. It's like, Pogs yeah, and Magic the Gathering is cool, all right? Like, that's exactly not, what I'm no, saying. It's not that I, I don't like it. I don't mean to come across that way. It's just, I don't, don't wing it. Spend time. And I do think, you know, now it's like kids do that already. I mean, back then it was like, maybe you had an internship, maybe you didn't. So, it, you know, that's changed obviously a lot. How old are you? No, uh, you don't have to tell us. I just I'm wanted 40. to. Say, I could. You look younger than us. Uh, I didn't think you'd actually answer. It was. I'm fair. Shit. All right. This is forty. Whoa. 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 This is how women act now. Yeah. Oh wow. They don't care. They're <laughs> brash. Acting like it's so crazy. Well, it's still rude to ask. I think women. That's why I thought it would be funny. Um, but um, yeah, I'm sure people are dying. God. I would also tell my 13 year old self, "Don't be ashamed of how old you are when you get older." <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Is this an issue? It's like some kind of crazy timeline yeah. you're building here. I'm trying to keep track Not of it. Not at all. I'm just going back to the original question so we don't get off topic. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I'm just throwing some shade. PR hat. Uh, so, wait. So, I contend PR is more powerful than ever right now. Like, uh, you know, perception is kind of reality in a lot of ways. I think one thing with like Twitter and the way we're reading stuff or, or reading statements is I think we still have this like lizard brain where anything in text is still way more important than if you hear an interview, even if it's a soundbite kind of chopped up and cut up to, yeah. to fit a narrative. Uh, what I guess in PR is, I guess when I talk to you about, <laughs> I don't want to throw any client. Work I know. I want to hear about the big cover up. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but like, remember Phil Helmuth, the uh, poker player, that yeah. he was the cocky uh -huh. guy that was like, if it wasn't for luck, I'd win every hand kind of thing. Like, yeah. Which is like a weird statement. And I feel like in the marketing world and PR world now, the statement's kind of carried over into, um, if it, <laughs> this work would be great if it wasn't for the client interaction a lot of the time. And I feel, I, look, I'm not saying that's what you say, Beth. I'm saying, is that the general? What does that, that the, guy have to do with this? That was just like a it's going to parallel. It's going to zigzag back and do it. <laughs> oh, I prepared for this. Um, Eric and I are both sitting here like, "Hey, where's this?" I think that's a parallel because he said, "If it wasn't for something." Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, it, there's this variable, uh, and everybody's uh. complaint in marketing agencies nowadays is it, the clients are the variable that that jacks the whole work up. Uh, I didn't know if that was kind of the sentiment on the PR side, because you've done it from the sports angle where you're walking people through, like literally walking with, uh, with athletes and being like, do say this, don't say that. Right. Yeah. But that, I mean, that's true. No matter I've worked with attorneys who should be very aware and careful of what they're talking about. And sometimes they say whatever they want and that's not okay. I mean, you have to, you have to kind of handhold a little bit no matter who it is, but yes, athletes for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I name my favorite uh, athlete you had? Sure. The the Chargers player and Sean? Bills play. Yeah, Sean was awesome. Sean Didn't Merriman. You? Yeah. Sean's a great Sean. Yeah. Look, the football Sean. dorks in us want to talk about him. <laughs> How, I mean, we we can talk football. Yeah, you know I'll talk football. Oh <laughs> yeah, former former co-host of the the Triple Option podcast. Which uh, yeah yeah. You, Beth was. Uh huh. Uh huh. There's a little too much. Beth was. Uh, what? Beth knows more about college football. I only than... knew the the other two dudes. Yeah, Beth would 
Steve Beth would come on Chad. a lot, and then uh, we tried to get West Coast co-host with Brendan T. Gleason. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is before you got talking. a lot of turnover. Also a Florida State fame. Yeah, Beth knows more about college football than I do at this point, for sure. Yeah, I don't look. I've lost it. I haven't. I haven't kept in touch with any of it. I don't know. And and I'm worse than you are. Yeah, I don't know who the cute boys are this year. Oh yeah, who's Spencer the cutest Rattler? drafter guy? Huh? Are you saying that's why I know? Because I'm watching. No, no, that's why I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I keep up with. I yeah. like Trey Lance and his bow tie when he got drafted. Mm. Uh, no. So anyway, you were saying that clients. <laughs> Well, clients seem to be the biggest variable. I just it's it it's a statement I've heard the last ten years that it's like this work is great to do, but people don't expect the variable of clients. How do you deal with that? You know, I found that Wim Hof maybe, breathing. Well, maybe maybe you you know you work whatever you have ten clients on your roster. It usually ends up the ones that get it, appreciate what you're doing, and, you know, are willing to be a partner in it are the ones that last. The ones that just come in and they're like high expectation, not not that clients can't have expectations, but, you know, realistic expe- expectations, I'll say. Um, if they don't have those or, you know, they, they don't get the value, they fade out pretty quick. So... Yeah, that can be frustrating because you put a lot of time and effort to get things off the ground. But again, over time, the ones that are a true partner in it usually last. And so, I don't know if that's my How often are you foisted upon people that are told you need a PR person? Are they? I'm, I know they're the ones that don't last, but is that pretty common? How long? I'm sorry. How, how, like, how often are you just, somebody's told that you need to get a PR person? talk to her, go do that. And then they're like, okay, fine. Yeah. I mean, I would say well, it happens a lot because I feel like the, whether it's an agency or individual needing PR, I mean, at this point, if you don't have it, it's kind of somebody telling you like, Hey, I can't believe you're not doing this yet. Um, so. so you were talking about the expectations is I feel like everybody tries to work it f- either they do it on an expectation of like this is going to bring you x amount of money in marketing PR which I think is a fool's errand mm-hmm. unless you really have data to back that up and and like empirical evidence of of showing that you have done that or yeah, how would that work I want to talk about that after this sorry well or what a lot of people do in PR which I know Beth doesn't do but I think a lot of people do this to get a client is They'll, go, they'll promise the world, but they won't be specific on what the ROI is. We're going to get you out there, and we're going to put you on, we're gonna yeah. put you on the, the Twitters and the Instagrams, <laughs> and we're going to get you all the likes on Facebook and all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you really, you're a B2B kind of thing. You really probably need to be on LinkedIn, or you need to kind of be focused over here in this channel, or maybe email marketing still number one, uh, or you know, maybe get good at working on your brand first, to be able to brag about what you guys do well, then maybe have some numbers to track it. Are you finding yourself when you're you're, you're thrown into a possible new client? It's just kind of like I don't know. Tell me what later to do. Like, did you tell me what to do and bring it bring it in? Tell me what's important. KPIs, all that stuff. Yeah, uh, there's <laughs> KPIs, baby. Key uh, performance indicators. Yeah, if anybody tough. Knows. So yeah, I mean, I do think there's, you know, there's prospects that come in and they have an idea of what they think PR and marketing is. And it's not, you know, like you were saying, it's, you don't need to be on it. You don't need to be doing TikTok as a law firm versus, you know, if you're a professional athlete, maybe you need to be on LinkedIn if you have a foundation, charity, something like that, or, you know, you have a page, but you're not necessarily using that as your go-to. Um, My biggest limit is when they go, we're not, we're not doing anything on Twitter. And you're like, do you understand how Twitter works? It's like it, the chasm between people that are followed and people that they're literally called followers. Like you're just following brands and celebrities. The chasm between there's, it's not a connection you're making. You're just, unless you're huge, like uh, my, my puberty kicked in. Unless you're huge. (laughs) (laughs) 
I mean, in terms of social media specifically, I would say, you know, pick one or two and do it really well. You okay. Don't, you don't need to be across the board on everything. I, I mean, and then once, I mean, if you're a consumer oriented brand or, you know, whatever athlete or something like that, then fine. Once you really like get that going and then you want to expand, fantastic. But I just find too many people, yeah, we set up Facebook, we set up this, we set up, and you're just kind of like talking to nobody because as you said, like you don't, nobody's following you. I mean, there, you know, there is some value to having content going up, it, even though you don't have a huge number of followers because <laughs> eventually somebody could land on you that way, but that's not a strategic way to do it. Well, yeah, and you have to add value for for the people on the other side, or else you're just you're you're just shouting into the wind, essentially. Well, and I think that's another thing is you know provide educational value. You know, nobody just wants to see your ad or your "This is why we're great." Um, and I think that's where I guess I'm thinking specifically law firms. I think that's where a lot of them miss it. Like there's there's a place for advertising, but in terms of you know, social or newsletters or whatever, this, it's not the place to say, you know, hey, this is great, hire us. It's provide educational value, trigger somebody to think, oh, wow, they could address that issue for me. Then I pick up the phone and call them. Yeah, lawyers, they got tons of little tidbits they can offer. That's easy. Well, and the funny Don't thing blow. Is, so many of them say, well, I don't want to give away my, you know, experience and knowledge for free. Yeah. Right? And it's like, Okay, but at the end of the day, I, you know, if I have a big enough matter or issue or whatever that I need a lawyer for, I mean, maybe I can go to what's the, what's the online legal zoom or whatever. It's like, but then they're probably not Absolutely. going to come to you anyway, because that's a totally different ball game, right? Like if I'm a solo and I'm starting a business or something and I have like zero budget, then yeah, maybe legal zoom works to get some documents set up, Yeah. but they want to call the attorney charging 500 an hour anyway. So it's like, that's not your market. So don't worry about it. But when you're putting out something that, you know, a company with a hundred employees and they need, you know, whatever it may be, it's like, yeah, that's, that's who you're targeting. And at the end of the day, they're not going to do it themselves. Yeah. I always, if we all do everything ourselves, we do it right. We wouldn't need all these other people to call. Yeah, and the fr I used to have law. We used to have work with law firms all the time, and the frustrating part is like, you have all these angles, you have all these things that make you mad. The reason you're at a small law firm, you have this kind of, they always have some kind of angle. The reason they're not in a corporate firm, and I'm like, just let me pull that out of you. Yeah, just write, say that on got, camera. Just dictate into an audio file and send it to me whenever you want. I'll transcribe it in Otter.ai, and we'll we'll form it into content. And it's like. <gasps> just do it like you have it's that if you could get content out of a lawyer that they're they're literally dispense it for free all the time anyway like you could ask them it they're when you're an attorney it feels like that's all that's like half your your personal conversations or just yeah. answering hey, i got questions. a question yeah. for you uh <laughs> i got in a car wreck they're like i'm a real estate attorney it's like uh, sure but let me finish to this guy so i drove through a house so and i'd be like you have that. So I so like you brought it up, like, what's the target audience? I used to have to go through this with everybody. Okay, I can't even give you the KPIs or the benchmarks until we get some basics down. And then if you know your cost per lead, cost per acquisition, that really helps, but you probably don't. Uh, but I'd go, who are you trying to target? Who? Look, most people don't know that shit. Uh, the four, <laughs> Eric's laughing, but I'm, I'm saying, laughing because you you probably don't. You probably that don't jab at whoever you're talking to in the ether. Small business owners. I've talked to a thousand eat. of them, and literally one I of them know. had these four numbers. I know it's just funny to me. I'm irate. No, yeah. uh, but I'm saying like it's it's insidious if you have if you have a, a small business and you don't even have a ballpark what that number is. You can hate marketing. That's fine. It, but you're in a service business and you don't even have an idea, but yet you're, the uh, attorney specifically would be like very hard ass about everything you're doing along the way. Yeah. Which is what I like a little bit out of them because it's like, come on, try me. Bring it, bring it, bring it. I got small man syndrome. Yeah. I know that's your, that's your MO. <laughs> I'm wearing a scarf. Do it. Yeah. You should stand up, show that outfit off. Pretty. Well, it's not, it's not billable time, right? So any time they're talking to you or me or whatever, it's 
like, hey, this better be worthwhile, and then some because I'm not billing for this. Yeah, it's even the opposite. Though, even though at the end of the day, it's like what I'm doing might be bringing you more business. And yes, it's very hard to have like a direct tangible dollar amount to that. But over time, it you know, it can be shown. But you got to be nimble. You got to, you can, everybody's got to fight big. Uh, and look, this, extrapolate this out into other industries. You could, you can make the case for elective surgery or, or uh, what else is super competitive on a service level, like uh, accountants. There's a lot of things where people could just go, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to go with the lawyer referral thing I saw on a billboard and just let it go. Or I'm going to pick Morgan, 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 Morgan. And because uh, mm -hmm. they, they're the biggest law firm in the country or whatever. And so I, I've heard of them. You'd be surprised how many people don't even I, – I grew up around attorneys, so I guess I don't – I find this weird, but I, I'm realizing how many people don't even vet – like they don't even price out, like talk to three attorneys – if they've got something, it's just like yeah, I don't crazy know. swings and someone in told me this I mean, person. Uh, maybe the craziest of all swings. You do it for a contractor. You call three people and go, "Hey, what's? I'll take that yeah. middle bid, and that's probably going to work." Uh, but people don't do that with law firms, doctors, anything else. Yeah, I don't know. I find that weird. Uh, so it is like a referral network. So work on that referral network. Be like, what do you guys do well now? Let's just do that better. I want to hear about press releases. Why are they important? Feels, I mean, it seems like you don't <laughs> still. Oh, well, you bet that an eye roll. Okay. Not really an eye roll. It was like an eye up and away look. <laughs> but uh, because with the you know whatever online social media etc. There's so much content out there, and not everything warrants press release. Actually, most things do not warrant a press release. Maybe it's a press release for your website in terms of, you know, I don't know, a new attorney joins. I mean, the amount of, you know, announcing like a new high level partner, one, one, join the firm. Sorry, not that many places care at this point. You know how many attorneys are moving firms and just, you know, other issues going on in the world. So, yeah, there might be two publications to send it to, but, you know, otherwise throw it up in your website for prospects and other people to see, put it in your newsletter. You know, if you're on Twitter, tweet about it. Great. Move on. Um, now, if it's a huge case result, when, you know, something like that, transaction closed, great. Um, but even then, it's, it's not so much the case result, it's the story behind it, right? It's what were the issues? What were, you know, the challenges overcome? That tells the story of who the firm is, what the attorneys can do, their expertise, and that sort of thing. I mean, again, just using the law firm as an example. What, what about sports marketing? Because you had a big background in that. Any, anything you see coming up with PR marketing in the sports, sports world? I mean, this isn't new, but... I think it's that access to athletes. Um, what is it like cameo? Yeah. You know, blew up in terms of like, or um, I got one from the Catch a Predator guy for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Chris Hansen, uh, shout out. <laughs> He's gettable. We could probably get him on the show. Was it, the Players Tribune or whatever. Like it's like first account from the athletes. I mean, it's that access, right? To feel like it's like anything, whether it's an actor or whatever other celebrity, people want to feel like they know that person personally versus just this like figure. Um, so again, I don't think that's anything necessarily new, but I think it's going to continue to grow in terms of just unique personalized marketing. Well, I, I feel like NBA players have got it kind of nailed down because they, they all have like their own legit like branding. Like I just saw a thing today. It's like, here are like 30 logos of 30 different players. I was like, I didn't, I had no idea. Really? Yeah. Like I don't know. That. The NBA players are really advanced in having like their brand as soon as they're, they're drafted and everything. I, I've, well, frankly, I, I think the NBA does an amazing job. I mean, there's, certain issues, but does an amazing job in terms of kind of providing that platform and helping like the NBA does an amazing job, like as an organization 
in terms of marketing and branding and that sort of thing, where I think the NFL <laughs> doesn't do a great of a job. <laughs> it, it, yeah, um, well, the NFL seems conservative by, by uh, relative to NBA in that regard. Right. There's yeah. so many more people, players, like that, you know, think about that. It's like 1,600 Having, players. Yeah. Kind of everything up. Yeah. Compared to the, you know, what is it, 350 in the NBA or whatever, you know, like it's a yeah, lot more other, to, to concern yourself with. That, when I was working with um, those guys, it was, you know, it's interesting to think, I mean, NBA, like you, you see them running around, like you see their face, right? Mm -hmm. NFL unless they're the top player, they're doing the sideline interview, you know, whatever, they have a sponsorship. Or they have giant hair out stuff. the back. Yeah, I mean, you don't, I, I don't know. I mean, there's, you know, kind of the, not practice squad guys, but like mid-tier mid and it's like, they're not doing a lot of that stuff. And it's like, okay, yeah, I know him. But like, if I saw him walking down the street or if I saw him on a commercial, would I be like, oh yeah, that's, you know, Joe Smith? I don't, some, you know, I don't know. So that's it's my brother. what I worked on with a lot of those guys because it was like, look, you may think everybody knows your face and your brand, but they don't. Yeah, yeah. And baseball is just kind of uh, say, a little bit of the same behind a helm, behind a, uh, not a, like got a hat on. Man. You got a hat, but still you see know, their face. A lot of dudes, a lot of dudes. Maybe it's just a numbers. A lot thing. of dudes. A lot of dudes, sausage party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. You know, I watched that movie for the first time. Sausage Party? Day. Yeah, I thought it was a kid's movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, not, not at all. <laughs> How old were the kids that you were watching it with? No, it was a, yeah, it was, it was an adult slumber party. But <laughs> you're in LA. Oh, adult slumber party. I was going to say, you're in L.A. still locked down. Is everything still, can you go out to a restaurant with more than four people? I think it's up to six at a table. Oh, wow. man. That's so forgiving. Although, this was in Palm Springs, but it was the girls' weekend you missed out on i know i used to go on the girls trips and now i don't um yeah that's right i used to go on the ladies trips and you were in la i know, well yeah but i went to park city with y'all uh i was security <laughs> yeah um but you use that a lot we went to sundance yeah it was fun um all right the real reason we want to have you on <laughs> is we we've been sharing great dating app stuff back and forth um and i wanted you to give the rules from your perspective as a, as a female on what not to do as what dudes should not oh. do on dating apps should i should i bring up our text and scroll <laughs> you can if you want i would say no. I, i'll give I'll, I'll give you a minute to, to, to think I'm so, ready. are you ready <laughs> okay i didn't know she has the text pulled up what no, do I was you not say, understand the one thing i have with the female with guys to, on the female side is the list of rules. If you get a list of rules of like, don't yeah. need no man to take care of me. Don't, I, I pay my own bills. No lies. None of this. It's like, whoa. Skull emoji. red flag. And I read them. Most women, most guys don't read any of them. Well, okay. So. <laughs> don't I, roll your eyes. You know guys <laughs> just go. Burr, 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 burr. Uh, no, no. I, trust me. Number one is kind of related to that. It's, right down don't be negative in your bio. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear, I mean, I get it. You know, there's the like prompt or whatever on the one that says, you know, what's a deal breaker. Okay. Smoking or I don't know, whatever. Fine. But like you said, like not the, I don't know. I don't want a woman that da 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 this or that. You voted like, for Trump. Swipe left. You know what? I'm okay with that. That one might actually, yeah, that might yeah. be a good one. <laughs> but, but I also do think it's a weird Vote for thing. Kanye. Swipe right. All right. Yeah. Well, I do think that is a weird thing to put, to like take up real estate, if you will, and you're right, it's only so many characters and whatever. And it's like, you can put your political views and it's like, okay, I mean, I can see if you put conservative or liberal or whatever, like I can probably take away. So don't take up real estate for your bio. If I mean, I'm not really a big, like, let me tell you my life story and my interests. Like, oh, you know, I, I mean, unless it's like unique stuff. I yeah, get to know like, them. Get to know them oh, first. I like to. I like to go out to restaurants. I yeah. love at the beach. Uh, I know, love traveling. Like, yeah. That's what, yeah. Everybody puts them. Yeah, on the guy side, uh, the less history or less yeah, less history, more mystery uh, seems to play right. If you have a guy that has so much stuff, like I thought it was being funny in some of those in writing, I was like, I re reread them. I'm like, what am I doing? 
Um, and especially, and I don't know, not to sound, I don't know what the word is, but like for a gauche. guy to have like a really lengthy bio, I don't know. Seems, <laughs> Maybe this is a personal seems thing. Codependent. Like, no, it seems needy. It seems codependent. It seems thirsty. A lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That seems high maintenance, I'd say. Seems like they talk a lot. So there's that. Then I would also say photos. I got a lot to say about photos. Pho photos <laughs> is most of the game. I mean, let's face it. it yeah. It's just like I didn't ads. even know there were bios until you guys brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, sign of the times. But, like, I don't need any photos, and especially your first one, and a mask. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody does. What okay. About a scarf. So okay. That's number eight. <laughs> cravat. So my cravat. Whatever you call it. I a couple things. So I am look the third one you and I kind of talked about. So we'll see what you have to say about it. But number two on photos is I don't need your like if you're a photographer or you're you like to go to the beach or whatever I don't need to take one of your five photos of like the sunset or your boat or your whatever mm -hmm. you know whatever That's not like, you I need to see you yeah. I need <laughs> of... or even your dog you know how much I love dogs and I'm like be in the photo with your dog sure I don't just need yeah. to see your dog okay fair That's that and then also. <laughs> I don't know what it is with guys. I assume you're fun and will get zany and whatever. I don't need three photos. And maybe maybe this is the issue. Maybe guys only take photos around <laughs> Halloween. They don't have like a lot of just like guys at dinner photos. So I'm listening. But it's like, I don't need your like dressed up as whatever in three photos. Like I can't even tell who you are. That's fair. I Like in a Halloween costume. I agree with that. I know you sent me your one though. And I was like, Oh, law. <laughs> I, it performs the best. See, I look at it from the digital marketing side. I go, this one gets the most liked. This one gets the most, uh, which one the, I'm wearing real short shorts and I, you can almost see my balls coming out. Uh, which one, which one, what of those balls <laughs> showing pictures right. are you talking That's about? Me. I have got a lot of short, short, short pictures. I, literally, I can think so of it's multiple. Not, it's not. Yeah. It's not. I'm not I'm not anti that photo, except like, don't you have like a mustache on and like some ah, I know the photo. Yeah. I know it now. Yeah. Right. So, so we, in the biz, I we call that an attention getter. Myself as like Larry Bird, Magic Johnson or whatever. And I can like, you know, you threw on a headband and I can see your face. Okay, fine. But like, if you're dressed up as Dracula. And <laughs> First off, I'll never do Magic Johnson because I think that would age poorly. I don't, I with all just, the politicians having blackface, I don't think that's going to work for me. That's why I picked. Okay, okay. I thought you were saying me specifically. <laughs> that's an example because I know two guys that dress up like that as a joke for various. It's in kind oh, of the frame. Oh, I've One. got some from college that it's not going to do them well. Mm -hmm. if those are passed around. Anyway, so photos like. But, not mean, but they weren't meaning to be racist. What I'm saying it's like, it's just. Never are. Just, yeah, right. I, you need some PR it's like Justin help. Trudeau or whatever. Um, so there's that. I mean, what about I, if I have a cool fish picture where I caught a big fish <laughs> or I shot a turkey? Can I see your face in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Great. Smiling. It's covered in blood, though. I'm smiling right next to a 10-point buck, and I'm so excited. That and I there's tears coming down the deer's <laughs> well, face because it's I sad. I personally from wouldn't be swiping right on you or whatever, but for so I'm sure in – Florida, and I'm generalizing here. That that'll no. The, I definitely see on female profiles that it says uh, it, there's a lot of women. Uh, this is the disclaimer that's kind of funny. It was like I see a lot of them. Like I don't need to see a fucking fish picture. Are you holding up a fish? So apparently no, it's a lot. I know there was there was some article that just like Cosmo or something. It's like we don't need your. Here's the thing. Like it shows an activity you like as long as I can see your face and. I, no, fine. due to doing it to sh due to doing it to show a, a shirtless pig without showing a shirtless pig, I think that's the strategy. Great, yeah. great, yeah. Because I just show straight up banana hammock. Yeah. Bathroom photos, there are too. It's like. And also, do you guys not understand? Like, I mean, I don't know. I don't have an Android, but on iPhones, like you can set a timer so you don't have to do the whole like. Oh, so that's a big difference. I think guys don't have, we don't have, I we don't take pictures in the car of ourselves. Oh, yeah. A lot. You know, like. No, no, no. 
No, but I'm saying majority men. of women, I'd say there's always a picture of them in the car. And you're like, what? Why? Why is really? this always a thing? I, no. There's a lot. Yeah. It's, it is good lighting. Because you but, do makeup in there. Uh-huh, yeah, it's uh-huh. good lighting. But, I, but same thing. Seatbelt goes well, right between the boobs. Doing, nice. Why are you doing this in the car? Like, there are timers. You could literally. Because they look cute. Put a timer on and sit there. Like, go sit on your couch and act like somebody took a photo of you at a party. And do it until you like it. And then <laughs> <laughs> put cardboard cutouts of real humans <laughs> behind something you. Something sociopathic and then, like, about pretend it, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm fun I am. All your photos are this in the mirror. It's weird. Uh, that's that's psychopathic, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I'd say the worst one is the one where, it, let's say six pictures, it's of her, her with somebody else. With yeah, a bunch you got to find, like, find them. The okay, fuck? which is one are you? Oh, yeah. No, that's not like crop or at least put the little, you know, emojis over. Yeah. Um, I also realize law per your, <laughs> your forwards. Clearly I'm missing out on the like boudoir photos. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Those are big, big time. Yeah. Do you it. need to take some, some sexy fainting couch stuff. You know what? Like George Costanza. Boats in bikinis. Plenty as but well. I, yeah, you have modeling pictures. I'm sa- you, uh, but I'm saying you need a fainting couch, George Costanza style. Right. I just did that because you're a huge Seinfeld fan. Uh, yeah, that's I actually what I thought of when you said. <laughs> every time I, I, I know. I every did. time I think of that, I think of George. No, Costanza. But I'm like, what? What? All of these women are a posting these and b then sending them to you even before first date. It's like a dick pic. I'm missing the book. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I would never, I would literally never do that. But. Yeah. Uh, now, here's my only thing, and we'll leave on this, is I heard this from Neil Brennan on a podcast uh, that I thought, I thought this was really lame, and then it became very smart. you got to FaceTime him before you go meet him in person. That, yeah. is, that is a rule I've got now. Yeah. A lot, lot, of, lot of trick not photography bad. on our side. I'm looking no. at a lot of angles that I didn't see before. I think... I mean, especially if, I was, if I'm in LA I'm, and I'm driving 40 minutes t- minimum to wherever, like I'm definitely doing that rule. Well, that's the funny thing. I'm like, yeah, I'll set it to like 15 miles in LA. I mean, that you could be in Burbank and then it's like, oh, I matched. And then I'm cool. like, you know, what? there's no way. I'm <laughs> I guess I'll go to the prices right so during I'm the like, day. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. I, you got to FaceTime beforehand. That has, has trimmed a lot of like, all, all the fat fatties phone call is fine i'm not into the video thing i think it's weird yeah but that's the whole point it's 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 weird it's definitely uncomfortable but it's like i'd rather do this than meet up and be like you know what though i feel like i don't know i also feel like people maybe have a bad judge of character it's like oh he only had two photos but he was like cute on the one and it's like no and that's where you end up in that, well, okay, I'm going to go meet him for a drink. Oh, it, he was weird. It didn't work out. Like, so, shocker. So don't match with people that you're not super into. You heard it here first. <laughs> Beth Miller, don't match with people unless you're super into She's them. She's in PR, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, though, there's, like, there's so, and I'm going to sound like, I don't know, a jerk or something, but it's like there's so few people Actually, that's a Seinfeld thing, too. He says, like, 1% of the population is dateable. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. 1%, 1% of the population. That might even be a stretch. That's a <laughs> big stretch, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, though, I feel like people are on there, and they're like, okay, whatever, and da 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 And then it's like, they go on all these dates, and it's like, but were you really that into it? Like, do you not have a good judge of character? Did you not get, like, are you excited to meet them? Or are you like, oh, I'm just going to go? Like, I have to be really excited to go meet somebody and if i'm not i'm like never mind yeah that's fair um but as Unless a dude you're just like whatever <laughs> or whatever then fine do your thing but. yeah well uh we gotta we gotta call it quits because we got our guest outside for the next episode but oh. yeah well actually he's been here he got here before you you're started. <laughs> yeah you're getting the apollo sam man uh oh, but uh please. anybody that wants to get a hold of beth can get a hold of us i guess yeah until you have your website up Beth Miller PR Ooh, direct. That's her direct Gmail wow. for reels. Legit. Thanks for coming on, friend. Thanks for having me.
Thanks, guys. Thanks, Beth.